Today we're working on the 915 transaxle. These were used in 1972 through 86 models. They had a couple of different iterations for cases. This one is an SC case. It has the electronic speedometer drive pickup. And this one is grinding gear, so we're just gonna open it up and see what's going on. So I'm about to pull off the end housing. They give us a couple of points to use our plastic mallet, like right here, where we can hit. And then there's going to be another point on the other side, right here, and then down on the rear mount boss down here. So I'm just going to crack this open. carefully slide that off. One thing we want to watch is that we don't lose our pin. This is our backup light switch pin that can sometimes fall out. So we want to make sure that that's still in there. So this is our reverse gear set up right here and we need to disassemble these gears off the back before I can pull the intermediate part of the case off to actually get to all the gear sets and pull it out. So I need to undo this knot there's a roll pin on the input shaft nut that needs to be disassembled. Take off the reverse idler gear and I'm just going to lay all that out on the bench. This plate is the pivot for the gear shift and I need to be able to get my gear shift out of the way to pull my reverse shift fork off. So there's a couple of little tabs where we can pry right here and also over on this side there's a little tab we just don't want to put our pry bar anywhere under the gasket surface there's our pivot this will allow me to move my gear shift out of the way so I can pull my reverse shift fork and my reverse idler gear off the back of the pinion shaft. So we don't have to undo this shift fork to pull this off. Just got to pull it straight out the reverse slider gear. We should be able to get our idler off of the shaft. It has two bearings in there and a little spacer between them as well as a Torrington thrust washer. Okay, before I can undo the input shaft sharp nut, I need to drive out the roll pin. And the roll pin is reusable. So to undo the, the nut on the input shaft, I'm just going to use my impact gun and a 27 millimeter sharpet. And pull out the castellated nut. So the pinion shaft nut is a one-time use and has a peen on it. Usually I don't bother even undoing the peen because I'm just going to throw that nut away. I'm going to use my impact gun again and my 36 millimeter socket. can see where the peen just opened right up. So we should just be able to slide off our hub, our reverse fifth hub, then pull out our fifth gear, our reverse idler gear, and the matching fifth gear here. This little shaft, which is the pivot shaft for the entire reverse idler, needs to come out all as, all as one with this gear. Because, it's, because of the cutout. So now we've got all the gears off the back, we can go ahead and undo our 8mm nuts around the intermediate part of the case and slide this case off.
intermediate housing comes out, that gear shift will come out with it as well. So now I've got the, uh, the gears exposed, I can look at the condition of my synchro. So this is first, second, third, fourth and fifth is out the back. Um, the bearing has some wear on it. The other thing I noticed is the bearing has been spinning on the shaft. This should be a, a press fit, tight fit. And I can see where that bearing is all galled up, so it's definitely going to need a bearing there. Um, pinion bearing, rear support doesn't look bad and it's kind of sort of tight. Uh, synchro, so this is third gear, this, this is a gear that gets a lot of wear and if I move my gear shift in so you can see right here that the synchro is all polished off and there's some pitting where that brake material has come off this is usually like a 36 grit sandpaper and as you try and select a gear it will slow that gear down by pushing this brake ring against the sliding fork or the slider, sorry so third gear synchro is definitely worn. The dog teeth are showing some wear as well. First and second down here don't look as bad. And what we're looking for is a polishing on the synchro. When they become really highly polished, they're no longer going to work as a brake and slow the gear down. So when you're shifting gears, they'll tend to want to grind. But all in all, it doesn't look too horrible at this stage. Get these gear sets out. First thing I want to do is remove my shift forks. So to do that, right here, these two bolts, they have a spring with a ball detent, and these are our shift detents. These are what help hold the gear shift in gear once you select it. So I'm just going to pull both of these. We want to make sure that we get there's a spring, and there's also a ball bearing in there. I'm going to use my magnet to get that out. Doesn't matter where these springs go, you can mix them up. They should be both the same length and the same strength. The magnet come down inside the hole and we can always get this one out later as long as it's released right now. It's just got a bunch of debris in the threads that it's getting stuck on. It'll detent, it won't want to pop out. Okay, there's the detent. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is Start up here, just going to undo the clamping bolt. This is going to allow this shift rod to slide on the fork. I do need to pull the bolt all the way out. And I'm going to loosen the actual shift part right here. These adjustments will need to be set up when we go to reassemble, but for right now, we just want to get it apart. Most of this should slide easily, but what happens is you get a lot of oil and debris build up on the shafts. And so what was happening is my actual selector didn't want to slide on that shaft real nice, so I had to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it to move. We'll need to wash up and measure our shift forks make sure they haven't got any excessive wear. You can see here there's a pretty good groove on this one. So we just need to measure this thickness to make sure it's still serviceable. So next what I'm going to do is undo all of these 8mm nuts right here. These are what retain the gear sets up against the front housing. I can pull this one out with the whole gear set so I don't really have to touch it right now. And then I can put all the gears on the bench. Okay, so I've got all the, the nuts off. The nuts were pretty boogered up on this one. There's nothing particularly special about the nuts. They do use a special lock washer though, where the outside diameter is a little bit skinnier. So if you can, save those, otherwise you'll have to order them through Porsche. They're not a commonly available size. Once I've got all the nuts and washers off, if I grab my gear sets, I should be able to wiggle them out along with my shift fork all as one assembly and then I'm going to go straight onto the bench. So 
So on our case, this is our pinion depth shim. There may be multiples of these shims. You want to make sure that you always hang on to these because that will be needed on reassembly. If you're making any changes to bearings or gears for pinions or the crown wheel, you may have to adjust. You can see there's two shims here. Then the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these bearing races don't slide in the case. This is a common problem where these will actually start to spin inside the housing and they'll actually wear out this housing where uh, to a point where you can either have a steel insert machined in, there's a couple of companies that do that, or replace the entire front housing assembly. The last thing I need to do on this transmission is pull the differential out. So I've already pulled the half shafts. I use my impact gun to just undo the center bolt and then I'm just going to pull the cover. Once I've got the cover off, all i got to do is grab a hold of the bearing, pull the differential assembly straight up and out. So now we've got it all disassembled, I'm going to start cleaning up. I'm going to start with my cases first, washing them out. These ones are a magnesium case, so I'm not going to go to blast or anything with them. I'm just going to scrape all the gaskets. I'm going to be replacing our bearings. These are our intermediate main shaft bearings here and pinion shaft bearings. So the main case is going to require a lot more cleaning. We've got to go over ahead and pull out our clutch fork. You can see this one is also worn. There's quite a big lip right here. So I'm going to put in a new clutch fork. This is fairly typical on the 915s. Guide sleeve doesn't look too bad. It's in pretty good shape. But we need to clean all of that out, remove the guide sleeve. And once again, we're going to be removing our bearings for our pinion shaft and our main shaft and replacing those. It's going to wash our case just to get all of our gunk and oil off of it. So just continuing to clean all of our parts for this transaxle. I've gone here, this is the differential cover and there's a groove right here. I've peeled this o-ring out. One thing that this doesn't need, whoever did the job last used a bunch of sealant. This does not need anything and all it's going to do is make it way harder to clean. The o-ring is all it needs to seal. So I've pulled that out. I've got to take out my axle seal and then I'm going to knock out my bearing race. So to knock out the axle seal, just going to use regular old punch, hammer. I got it over my little V in my transmission table. And just drive that straight out. And then that goes into the trash. When it comes to the bearing races, we've got to be careful. We need to pick up right here with our punch. I'm actually going to use a bearing punch instead of this round punch. And I'm just going to knock this bearing race out as well.
So the difference between using a round punch like this and a bearing punch which is like this is the amount of contact I have on that bearing race. I got to be really careful when I drive this bearing out that I don't damage anywhere here in the bore. So if I bring my punch in on an angle like this and hit it, it's going to gouge out a big part of this ball, which is, means that the bearing won't be retained completely. So I'm continuing to clean up my case. I'm up to the front differential housing right now. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take out our clutch fork mechanism. I need to replace the clutch fork because it has some fairly substantial wear right there. You can see there's quite a lip, which is fairly normal. But this shaft through here needs to be cleaned and greased. I'm going to pull out the guide sleeve as well. And inside, over in here, I'm going to knock out the seal and that bearing race before I clean. These bearing races we're going to replace, but I'll knock them out once I've cleaned everything up. So to remove the clutch assembly or the clutch fork and shaft, I'm going to drive this roll pin. And what I have to do is get it started right here, but I can't keep driving it all the way back out because it'll just end up into the case. So normally what I will do is Start moving it out, making sure that I can still pivot enough, and then I'll grab it with a pair of side cutters and pull the rest of the pin out. Okay, that's about it, maxed out there. Now I've got the pin about halfway out. I'm just going to use my side cutters, grab that pin, and pull it out like that. Usually I will replace this pin when I pull it just because of where it is and if it breaks this whole shaft assembly will slide out. Once I've got the pin out, should be able to just grab that shaft, slide that out and my clutch fork will pivot out as well. The next thing I'm going to move is the differential side seal just like we did on the other cover. Just going to tap it straight out. And then I'm going to roll the case over and tap out the bearing race. The same as with our side cover, I'm using my bearing punch. And I've got to make sure that when I locate on that bearing, I'm just picking up on the bearing and I don't dig into the side of the case. So now I've got all of the uh, basic stuff out of the case, so I'm going to take it off my stand and I'm probably going to wash it first and then I'll pull out the guide sleeve and these last bearings. So I've got the case out of the parts washer. One of the advantages of using a really hot parts washer is it expands the magnesium and our two bearing races, I was able to just push them out pretty nicely. We're going to look at these in a little more detail later. So I'm just moving through and cleaning up the case. With these cases, these are designed to go on dry these gaskets. Somebody, the last guy, has used a sealant. This is not a good thing. 
all it's doing is creating an extremely long clean time because I've got sealant over everything that I got to try and scrape out now. If everything is clean, dry, and flat, these gaskets should be able to go on without any additional sealants. When it comes to getting out the guide sleeve, I'm going to use my impact driver. These are a tapered seat on these screws and they generally get pretty tight. The guide sleeve is going to have an o-ring behind it and it also houses the oil seal for the main shaft. I'm just going to set these up. Now normally this would just twist out. These two holes right here are to put in a little hook tool and pull it. But I can see all the sealant that's dribbling out from the last guy that decided that an o-ring wasn't good enough for him. So I'm probably going to have to tap this out from the back. This is another reason why we shouldn't use sealant where it's not supposed to be. So yeah, we can see a lot of goo and sealant to glue that in. And when it's installed correctly, this O-ring is all you're going to need. To remove the seal from the shift housing, I'm just going to use a flat blade screwdriver. The thing that I need to be careful about is when I come in, I don't want to go too deep and damage the bore. So I'm just going to leave it short, try and hook underneath that seal a little bit, and very carefully pop it out, just like that. The next part of cleaning is, since it's been through the parts washer, I've done a lot of scraping and scrubbing. Now I'm just using some brake clean, getting out all of the remnants of the uh, gasket material. There's also some pockets because of the castings where a lot of debris is trapped. And the best way to get that out is with a high evaporation solvent and just wash and flush that out. Also it gets rid of all of the uh, gasket debris and little fluff, pieces of fluff that can be left on the case.